Hey friends, Chubby Meeple back today with another Kickstarter preview for you. Today we're going to take a look at Papillon Gardens. This is from Colossal Games, designed by J.B. Howell, featuring art by Whitney Raider. Um, and this is, uh, if, you, if you've seen Papillon in the past, a little bit of a tile-laying game with butterflies gathering in uh, in gardens, if you will. Uh, this is a, a, another game in kind of that universe, but this is a roll and write game, as the box says here. Um, and it's also a flip and write, a roll and write, a, a, a flip and stamp. There's a lot going on. In this game. Um, I want to give you a quick, just a quick overview of it. Um, one quick caveat, anything that you see component-wise uh, in this video, whether it's pictures that pop up on screen or anything I may hold up, 100% um, prototype, um, so expect things to change. Rules may even change a little bit from uh, what I what I explain here, uh, but this will be coming to Kickstarter coming up here on April the 25th, so this upcoming Tuesday uh, from the time that this video is being shot. Uh, there will be a link to the Kickstarter page in the description of this video, so you can click over there, take a look at everything they've got going on um, and and get your copy if this looks like something that's interesting to you. Papillon Gardens, like I said, it's a, I kind of jokingly refer to it as a roll and flip and stamp and write game because there's a lot of stuff going on. So at the, in the start of the game, every player is going to be given two sheets. You're given your garden sheet and you're given your fill sheet. Um, and these are a little combo-tastic if you're familiar with games like Fleet the Dice Game, um, Three Sisters, Motor City, those kinds of games. Um, it's combo-y like that, but it's not nearly as heavy of those, as those games. I want to caveat that. This is not a heavy game. Uh, this is a, a, a super, I wouldn't call it super light weight because they're definitely rolling rights that are lighter than this um, but uh, it, it's way way easier than like a motor city or something like that each player is going to be given two sheets you get your garden sheet you get your fill sheet so your garden sheet is where you're going to be filling in fields you're going to have your butterfly uh, piece so you have a little butterfly piece that you'll move around the board um, and to, to indicate the, the different patches of land that the butterfly has has uh, has visited and that'll get you points at the end of the game but you'll also be adding additional fields the two green spots that are on this are your field spaces you'll every player will start with two um, that you have and you'll be filling those in with either critters or features as the game goes on. On your fill sheet You've got flowers here that you can fill in um, with uh, just as, as as you get the, the ability to fill circles in. You'll fill those in, and they'll as you hit different icons, uh, you'll be able to move your butterfly. You'll be able to stamp flowers. Uh, you'll be able to take gnome actions, which are uh, kind of wild actions. You'll also be collecting caterpillars on this uh, on this track at the bottom of the fill sheet. So as you collect caterpillars from the dice, uh, which we'll see in a second, uh, you'll be able to uh, fill these in, and every time you hit one of the gnome hat icons on there, you'll get to do basically another wild action so uh, more comboing uh, on there and then you also have the critters at the top you have your ants your bird your spider your snake your uh, your praying mantis and your frog they're all worth various um, uh, victory points at the end of the game and so you'll want to get those in your garden as well the way the game plays is you're going to take these lovely Papillon Garden cards. We're going to shuffle these up. There are 36 cards. You're going to make three piles of 12. And then you're going to flip the top card of each of those three piles over. There are then three what are called Caterpillar dice in this game. And the Caterpillar dice have icons in them. Now, I will say this is prototype component. Um, the dice in the game will not be this small. This is a very small die. But these are the main way you're going to collect Caterpillars. There's also some extra things on here that let you do fills on your fill sheet. There's some things on here that let you um, draw extra fields on your garden sheet. And then there's also some dice that may give you a lot of caterpillars, but may make you draw brambles, which basically block spaces in the game. So they're not terribly great, but they can be used if you, if you use them wisely. Um, but essentially, you're going to flip over. You have three stacks, 12 cards each. You'll flip over the top card, and those cards will give you various things. You're then going to take the three caterpillar dice. You're going to pair one die per pile, you're gonna roll those dice, and you're gonna match those up. So you're gonna take a card, so this may be one of the cards that you have, and this may be the die that you roll, you're gonna pair that up, you're gonna lay this on the table, it's gonna set there so that you have a pair of a card and a die. And essentially, on, on simultaneously, every player is going to pick one combination of card and die, and will do the three actions that those two things allow you to do. The die, and you can do those in any order, it's up to you. The die allows you to gain caterpillars mainly, uh, so checking off those caterpillars at the bottom of your fill sheet. So if you get two caterpillar icons on here, so let's say I pick this die that has this two caterpillar icons, I get to take my fill sheet and I get to fill in two little caterpillar circles at the bottom of the sheet, pretty easy. I will then take the card that it was laying on and I can again do this. I can either draw bricks on my garden or in this case with this flower, I'd be able to stamp a blue flower. Now, stamping a blue flower, What's stamping a blue flower? Well, that's where this lovely thing comes in. This game actually has stamps that have your different flowers. So obviously you got your blue flower, your purple flower, 
and then we've got flowers for red and yellow as well. Um, so you have your flowers uh, that will show you kind of what they look like on the board, but you will stamp those. You'll literally take the stamp and stamp that in an open spot on your board that is not a field. Um, so any of these on your garden sheet, any of these white spaces can be where you can stamp a flower. A space can only have a flower or a field in it. It can never have both. But in order to put features and critters in there, you have to have fields because your features and critters can't go in the open white spaces. So you have to kind of balance that, which is very cool. Um, then this card here that I'm holding up, you stamp the blue flower. This allows me to draw a, a brick wall on my garden sheet. So that lets me fill in one of the spaces between two squares on my board. Um, and that's good for uh, scoring because you can have uh, patches of flowers enclosed in bricks to score extra points um, if you have that. Uh, just to give you an example of the cards, you have the four different flowers. So you've got your yellow, red, purple, and blue flowers. Again, corresponding to the stamps, so you'll stamp those particular colored flowers on there. And then you're going to have one of three icons at the top of these cards, or around these cards, that give you the ability. You have your bricks, which we talked about, being able to fill in uh, one space in between two plots on your garden sheet. You have uh, this little uh, icon here with the gardening tools. This icon allows you to build a feature in one of the fields on your gardening plot, and we'll talk about features in just a second. And then you have this card with the little pencil icon. This pencil icon lets you fill in a circle on your, you guessed it, your fill sheet. And that can be any circle uh, except the caterpillars, but you can fill in any of the stalks um, or any of the dots up under the critter. So if you fill in this little, this little mark here, you'll be able to, uh, this little stamp icon indicates that you'll be able to then add the ants to your, uh, to a, a, an empty field on your garden sheet. Um, the ants and the birds are worth two victory points apiece. They only take one dot to fill in before you can stamp it. When you get to the spider and the snake, they're worth five points apiece, but you have to fill in two dots before you can draw one. So the first dot is just filling in that dot. And then when you fill in the second dot, you get to fill, you get to draw that, uh, that critter. And then you have your praying mantis and your frog that are worth 10 points apiece, but they take three fills. As you fill in your flowers down here, every time you hit a stamp, you get to stamp the flower of that color. So if I fill in this dot here, for example, I'd get to stamp a red flower any, anywhere on my board, which is fantastic. Then we have two other cards. So we've seen the flowers, we've seen the three actions that the cards can give you as far as the icons are concerned. We then have this card with a butterfly on it. This butterfly, both the illustration of the butterfly and this icon here of, of the butterfly, will give you butterfly movement. And for every butterfly movement that you have, you can take your butterfly token that's on your board. It's going to start on your uh, on your, your garden. Everybody will have a, a token. You'll be able to take that token from wherever it is on your board and move it up to three spaces in any straight line. And as you go past spaces, you're going to color in these little butterfly icons to show that that butterfly has visited that particular space on the garden. And that will also grant you victory points at the end of the game. So that's what the butterfly does. Then you have these cards that have the butterfly movement as well as this little field uh, illustration. This card lets you do your butterfly movement just like we had, but it also gives you the ability to add a field to your uh, garden board. And so essentially you're gonna take, what I usually do with this is, is I've been, I just draw these little, these little grass, um, little grass icons just kind of down in the corners of three of these so it looks similar to the green one. And that way I know I have a field there that I can then put a feature or a critter in. What are features you might ask? Features at the start of the game, you're going to have a, a set number of features that are going to start that everyone's going to be using for the entirety of the game. The features are going to do things like give you bonus actions, or they may give you in-game in points. So for example, the shed feature here, if you use the shed feature, uh, what happens here is when I use this icon to draw a feature, if I choose to draw the shed, these features are going to be face up on the table. You're going to have, uh, I believe it's three A's, two B's, a C, and a D, and you can mix and match those to up the replayability. But when I choose to when I choose to add this shed, it has to go into one of my fields, uh, so I can't put it in one of the empty white spaces that can hold flowers. But I'll draw this icon if I want to be simple. I can also get creative and actually draw a shed and try to be all artsy. Um, I'm not artsy, so I will draw this icon. And then the shed lets me do three bricks and add a field to my garden my garden board. So just one of those um, one of those that give you bonus actions. Some of the other features you may run across, you may run across the bird feeder here. The bird feeder gives you two victory points for every adjacent critter, um, that every critter that's adjacent to the bird feeder. Again, critters can only be in fields. So if you put the bird feeder in a field that has a bunch of white space around it, you're going to want to add fields to those white spaces so you can get critters. So you can score the bird feeder at the end of the game. This will be worth up to eight points because diagonals uh, are adjacent um, in here. You then have the pond. The pond here, this uh, gives you one victory point for every adjacent different flower, uh, critter, feature, 
or adjacent bramble. So this is one of those ways that having to draw those brambles from the caterpillar die can actually score you points at the end of the game. Um, and then you have things like the hammock. This is an example of one of the C-level cards. The hammock gets you two victory points um, for each flower patch of a different color. A flower patch is a group of uh, a, a group of three or more adjacent flowers of the same color. And then you'll also score points if that patch, if that flower patch happens to be enclosed in bricks, which is kind of cool. You're going to play this over ten rounds. You'll notice at the top of at the top of the sheet. So you're going to have three cards that are face up, paired with three die. Everyone simultaneously is going to pick a die and card combination and do the three actions they're allowed to do from that uh, and, and do those in any order they wish. Once everyone's ready to move on, you simply reveal the next cards in, in each of the three stacks, roll the dice again, and proceed until we've hit 10 rounds. At the start of each round, you're going to cross off the round number. So this round number one just says start. Round number two, and you'll notice every other even number for four, six, eight, and ten also have icons on them that give you bonus actions. So the second round, you're going to get to fill in a dot. The fourth round lets you draw a brick uh, somewhere on your on your uh, board. You get to add a feature uh, on the sixth round. The eighth round lets you move your butterfly, and in round ten, you get another fill action. At the end of ten rounds, you're going to total up most points, uh, or total up the victory points from uh, critters that are on the board. So the ones that are so your your two five or ten point critters, uh, you will score one point for every square on your board that a butterfly has visited. So every square that you have on your board, whether it's got a flower, whether it's got a field with either with or with or without a creature or a feature, or you have a an empty square that the butterfly flew through, you still get points for those. So you get one point for every square there. You will score. The two, five, ten points for any critters that you've added to fields. You'll get one point for every uh, flower that you have on the board. You will then get one point for every flower that's in a flower patch. So any of those clusters of the same colored flower. So I've got three red flowers. I get to score those red flowers again. And then if they're if those flowers are enclosed inside brick, completely enclosed inside brick, I get to score those flowers again. You'll then score features, and most victory points wins. Um, it's a very quick game. Um, it plays probably 30 to 45 minutes, um, and probably and once everyone knows what they're doing and is playing it uh, consistently, playing it quickly, because everything simultaneous turns, you're probably going to be much closer to that 30-minute mark. I've played a couple solo games. Um, the, the solo mode in this game is a, a beat your high score kind of thing, see how you do, um, and, and kind of get you practiced as well for, for, for taking on multi, multiple players. Uh, but it plays exactly the same. You're just kind of taking on yourself playing 10 quick rounds. Uh, I've played games solo that have lasted 15-20 minutes, so a very quick game to play. That is Papillon Gardens uh, from Colossal. A uh, little bit of discussion about the game. Um, I mentioned a little earlier in the video, um, if you're a fan of Roland Rights, I definitely recommend this one. This one's, it's, it's, it's a nice, light, family weight uh, game. Could even see this being played with uh, even younger kids, um, not only because of the, the ease of play and the easy, the easy rule set, the very accessible rule set, but the stamps. Um, the fact that if I've got a kid who's six or seven years old, they may not really be able to draw flowers very well or really understand, you know, where to put them on here. But being able to take this stamp out, literally stamp the flower um, on there, and it draws this neat little pattern. <laughs> so uh, it definitely definitely makes it easier for the younger crowd. Um, I mentioned the comboing you have. You do have the combo ability. It's nowhere near to the extreme combo ability of something like a Three Sisters, a Motor City, uh, Fleet the Dice game, anything like that. It's near, not near the complexity. Don't be frightened by the fact that you have two sheets like you do in those games. Um, it's not. Uh, it, it is not uh, near that heavy. It's very accessible, very easy to understand, very easy to teach, very easy to play, which is awesome. But you still get that combo. Uh, that combo ability. Um, if you're if you're on the lighter end of of roll and write games, so you're used to playing things like uh, that's so clever, uh, knock mall, um, those kinds of things. Um, this is a little bit. I would, I would put those up maybe a little heavier than I guess that's so clever's got some more comboing to it. Um, it. It goes a little crazy with combo, so you definitely have to pick dice carefully there. But this is a nice little game because. Um, it's just it, it's just pleasant. It's calming. It's relaxing to play. Um, I love the simultaneous player actions because it does make the game go faster. Um, there's not a lot of downtime in it like you can have in some other in, in some other games um, that are similar to this. Uh, but I would definitely check this out. I also really enjoy this because as I'm playing it, uh, you know, you can almost you can almost kind of have that that kind of calm feeling uh, as you're re relaxing and playing a game. It's not super thinky. Um, you know, there's definitely some strategy to it. But overall, it's a very accessible game. 
I highly recommend it. Um, the, the, the folks at Colossal do great work. JB Howe's a fantastic designer. I mean, look at this art. Whitney Raider's art is fantastic as well. It's going to give this game a really beautiful look on the table. Uh, definitely check this one out. Again, Kickstarter link will be down in the description of this video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. And of course, until next time, keep gaming, friends.